husband of British Iranian hostage on hunger strike. November 13th, today marks the 21st day of Richard Radcliffe's hunger strike aimed at pressuring the British government to fight to free his wife, Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe, from her arbitrary detention at uh, the hands of Iranian authorities. In 2016, Nazanin was accused of espionage by the Islamic Republic of Iran and sentenced to five years imprisonment after she visited the country to see relatives. Zaghari Ratcliffe is one of several incarcerated Iranian dual citizens that are essentially held as hostages and used as political bargaining chips by Iran in its fight against Western countries. She completed her sentence on March 7th, 2021, yet was suspiciously given additional charges in a second prison sentence, making it impossible for her to return to her husband and daughter in the United Kingdom. Radcliffe is deeply disillusioned by the actions of his government, calling Prime Minister Boris Johnson's, Johnson's lack of strategy, quote unquote, managed waiting. Thus far, there have been no firm commitments from the British government to step up their efforts to ensure the return of Nazanin. Um, so I get really emotional with this news. This isn't something that um, is strictly religiously related, but I feel um, compelled to talk about it. Um, it, oh my God, like, Every time I, uh, um, I cry over this like very easily. Um, it's really heartbreaking. So actually I wanted, uh, Armin, can you give your, um, I want to show something, but I want to hear what you have to say first. Well, okay. First of all, I want to mention that it's absolutely the case that the Iranian government kidnaps, you know, foreigners like this dual citizens right people with dual citizenship as a as a hostage tactic you know what i mean like these people are completely these are trumped up charges that like she didn't do anything wrong like these whole they have admitted but they have openly admitted that they take these people as hostage as a way to as a pawn as a way to get something from the governments that they want to pressure like the uk Right. They openly have said that this is a strategy like Nazanin hasn't hasn't done anything wrong. They just she's a dual citizen of Iran and the UK. So she goes to Iran to, to visit her family and they're like, oh, you're a spy. And they capture her as a way to pressure the UK government. What does this say about the Islamic Republic? Because this woman has, is a dual citizen. Right. Sus? Right. Nazanin. OK. So what does this say about the Iranian government? that they know that if somebody has an Iranian and a UK citizenship, that means that the UK government cares more about this person than the Iranian government. Like, look at how much the Iranian government itself knows the worth of the Iranian citizenship relative to the UK citizenship, where they are willing to put somebody in jail. Like, this is our citizen, and we don't care about her, so we're we are okay with like turning her life into a living hell, taking her away from her husband and her children for so many years, because we know that this is actually that the UK government, this is a person that the UK government actually cares about somewhat, maybe not as much as they should, but of course more than we do, because at least they are as much as you could criticize the UK government for not doing enough to free Nazanin, at least they are not the people who are putting their citizens in such level of torture mental torture to get something from another government like look how this is an absolute admission by the iranian government that we are relying of of other on other countries more civilized countries to care about their citizens more than we do about our citizens like that's what they're openly admitting but anyways you wanted to show something um yes i completely agree with you and before i move to show you the thing i want to say that so the title of this news is husband of the hostage blah 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 here's the thing i will I, that's that's me making the assertion that she is a hostage and i am ready to defend that claim to the end 
just it's there are high but the british government itself refuses to acknowledge her as a hostage there are high level government officials who will say that she is a hostage but the government itself refuses to actually acknowledge that situation and her husband richard that that's a huge point of contention for him um so here we go um this is from the official at free nazanin account Day 21, hashtag free Nazanin. Today I have promised Nazanin to end the hunger strike. Gabriella needs two parents. Thank you for your overwhelming care these past three weeks. So, today Richard ended his hunger strike upon the insistence of his wife because after 21 days of hunger striking is when you start to inflict permanent damage on your body. And so his wife told him to stop. Um, and he's been camping out in front of um, the foreign office for the past three weeks on hunger strike with the support of his extended family and some friends hoping that they will step up in their actions to free his wife because they he's just saying the status quo is unacceptable you guys have no strategy where's the strategy you're just going to let her languish she's multiple analysts have called her situation a kafka-esque situation where they take her off to court, they don't even allow her to see the evidence being presented against her for this like supposed threat to national security or espionage, which is frequently what they use against people who they take as political hostages, diplomatic hostages. Um, and after five years, she was found guilty. She goes through five year sentence, okay? The week that she completes her sentence one week later, they bring her back into court with new charges. Start it all over again, like this is a kangaroo court. Like Kafka literally has a novel about this person who has to go through something called prolongation or um, like overhanging acquittal, where you just like, either this is just gonna continue or I, I have this hanging over my head. I don't know what's gonna happen. And what's so difficult about this is that what is at the heart of this is something that happened 40 years ago. What is at the heart of this is $440 million. So back before the Islamic Republic of Iran was established, the UK had this deal with the Shah over um, tanks and some military equipment. And the, the Shah's uh, regime paid this $440 million for this equipment. Then that was overthrown. We have the new regime installed. And then at that point, the UK said, we don't want to deliver this equipment to you. Well, through various courts and stuff, it's been established that the UK actually does owe Iran this debt. And it's also... So they want the money. They want the money, but this has nothing to do with Nazanin. They, they they like give us our money that you that you owe us, but they kidnap Nazanin as a way to get their money back. Yes, yes. You know, and they have I, constantly acknowledged hmm. that this is specifically the issue that's keeping her stuck. It's not officially recognized, but there's been these little acknowledgments of this is at this is at what's the heart of this this thing that happened forty years ago. Like what does it, why does Nazanin and her family have to pay for all of this? She had nothing exactly. to do with any of it. Like guys, imagine like she was in prison and she she served her sentence and now she's over and we got pictures on social media that she was out of prison. And people were like, "Oh my god, she's out of prison, but would they let her leave Iran or not?" Okay? Like her sentence was finished. Okay? So imagine the state of mind of Nazanin and everybody else that loves her, okay? Her sentence was finished. She was out of prison. She and was supposed like, to leave the next day. Yeah. They were like, okay, 
is she going to leave? Is she going to leave Iran or not? And instead of wondering if she's going to be stuck in Iran or be able to leave Iran, we get news that, no, actually, they came up with new charges. And she, not only she's not leaving Iran, she's going back to prison. Imagine what does that do to your mind if you're the husband or the children or the loved ones. Like, you thinking there's two options. Either she's stuck in Iran or we're going to get her out of Iran. Like what? But then you get the worst the worst news, neither of that, back to prison. Like that is like absolute mental torture. Like I don't even know how to describe that. Like how evil do you have to be to do this to your to a family? Like how, by the way, I don't know if I could, I don't want to defend the UK government on this, okay? But I'm wondering, like, I, I mean, like I understand the husband wanting, like, he's like, he's asking the UK government to give Iran the money, correct? That's what his demand is, so that she, he could get his wife. Ult That's one of his demands. Ultimately. Yes. But I don't know, like, the problem, again, I don't want to, this is going to sound heartless. The problem is that if you now give them the money, you're encouraging more kidnapping of other citizens, of other dual citizens. Like you're encouraging hostage taking behavior. So to some extent, you might think like some of these politicians might think like, well, even if we wanted to give the money before, now it's not a good way to give the money because now we're going to be encouraging more people being at risk. Again, just a thought. I don't know. Go on, Susan. Well, um, to be fair, I don't know if he's just saying like outright just pay it. Um, he is. I heard is, he is. He, he was demanding okay. that. It, he's in general. He just wants like more action, something. But here's the deal. Here's the problem. So there are people who think that countries should take a zero tolerance policy towards this quote unquote diplomatic hostage taking, right? Um, understandably so. Like we don't negotiate with uh, terrorists, violent, radical extremists. That kind of attitude. Um, but the we problem is terrorists because we're trying to not trigger YouTube's algorithm. But yeah, go on. The problem with that is if you decide to take a zero tolerance policy, the per who's paying the price for that? Your citizens and their families are paying the price for that. On the other yeah, hand, if you <sighs> actually fight for your citizens and their families, you have to work with this regime. And in fact, historically, this diplomatic hostage taking has been successful. For, for example, I want to quote something. Uh, Ji Wu Wang, a Chinese American historian jailed for three years and released in 2019 in a prisoner swap said hostage, hostage taking is a pillar of the Iranian state. He argues that the survival of the Iranian regime re rests on maintaining a level of managed hostility with the West and dual nationals personify nofuz, the infiltration of Western values, something that must be resisted. This He says the real problem is that hostage taking currently works. Empirically, he is right. Yes. Yeah, so my, my thing is that you should get these people back, not by paying Iran their money, but by becoming extremely aggressive. Like this is, this, this should be like seen as like, this is an act of war against our citizens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this should be, like, what I want to see like, from the UK is not, like, oh, here's your money, give us our citizen back, please. What I want to see from UK is, like, we're going to make things very difficult for you. You know what I mean? Like, I want levels of escalation. You're like, you're coming after our citizen. You have to pay. Like, I want this to backfire. I'm not saying the UK government should, like, not do anything about this. I'm just saying the thing that I want to see done is pressure rather than caving into their demands. That's what I want. Um, unfortunately, so unfortunately, they're not going to do that because about because of the Iran nuclear deals, and they think that's way they consider that to be a lot more important right now than Nazanin. They think like you know wars, uh, you know, are, are at risk if we don't get a nuclear deal. Like that's the the level of calculation. So there's two things. They don't they don't want to give them. They might not want to give the money because they would encourage more behavior like this against other citizens. But uh, so they they're not they might not want to appease. They, they don't want to bend the knee to the Iranian government. But they might not like my solution either, which is going more aggressive because right we're right now in the middle of the nuclear deals. 
and they don't want to mess with that, right? So I'm hoping that this nuclear deal gets over very soon. Like either whether it succeeds or fails, I want them to we move past that so that Iran so that Iran can't use that as a way to make people treat them with like you know like with glove hands. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like I want this thing. Mm -hmm. I want the whole nuclear deal situation to be over so that Iran gets the proper reaction for all this fuck goddamn mess all the behavior like a lot of these behavior like if i was like a head of a nation i would i would see it as a declaration of war like this is our citizen you this is this is a declaration of war you attack one of our citizens like i i know they don't they don't escalate things like this but i would see it like that like how else would you describe this you took one of our citizens with no due process with no legal justification this is war Right. But again, we don't live in that kind of world. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting because in terms of like, oh, you don't want to capitulate. Well, the issue is that there has been court rulings that England actually does owe Iran this money. Now, this is the dirtiest possible yeah. way to go about getting it. And it's interesting because there's different people saying about what would be the consequences of actually delivering it. Like there's all these obstacles like sanctions, this money could end up in the hands of people we don't like, like there, um, would other countries sanction us for delivering these funds? How would we do it? What would the interest be? Like all this stuff. And then other people are saying, actually the obstacles aren't as much as what people make it out to be. Like we could get her home if we wanted to. Um, I know, but okay, and even since, I... mm -hmm. sorry, I just want to add because this is important that since Nazanin was taken, there have been at least three other British Iranian dual nationals who have been taken hostage in arbitrary um, detention mm -hmm. since her. Um, I just, I agree. I know that legally that is Iran's money. Okay. I'm not disputing that, but I don't think that, I think you should have, I think you don't want to pay that back as a response to these hostage taking situations. That's what I think. Because then you're putting, if, if it works, if this kind of tactic by Iran's government works, you're encouraging more behavior like this. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Honestly, I mean, at this point, when it comes to negotiating with the G GCPOA, governments need to get real. This is the nature of the Iranian regime. This isn't, oh, this is suddenly going to change once this deal is over. This is who you are dealing with in, the, in their essence. Like, I don't mean as a it's essentialized to a person. I mean, as the, the attitude of the regime. Okay. The this essence their, of the regime, not the people. Yes. Yes. Like, don't fool yourself. That That's from Masih Alinejad, what she was saying. When the, when the FBI revealed that there were plots to kidnap an American citizen who works for the U.S. government on American soil. Our current administration is so cucked by the nuclear talks that they barely even acknowledged it. And Masi said, don't fool yourself. This is the very nature of who you are dealing with. This isn't going to change with the deal. This is why there shouldn't be talks for a deal, because this is who they are. When someone tells you who they are, believe them. It can't get more serious than this. Sorry. <laughs> no, that was perfect. That was perfectly said. Yeah. I, I, I have zero to add to that. That's how perfect it was. I have nothing to add to that. That's how awesome. Yeah. Fun. Thank you. Oh, um, all right. And yeah, secular rarity saying Suzanne is on fire. She is. Also, don't, know his, <laughs> don't mess with President Emperor Armand. <laughs> True. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.